Good morning, everybody. Have a blessed Sunday for all of you. Amen. God is so good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, oh God, for this day that you've given us. Thank you for this wonderful works. Thank you for all your amazing works, Father God. Heavenly Father, we want to be right before you. Lord, Father God, right now we ask you to cleanse us, oh God. Lord, whatever it is that you see in our mind and in our heart, we ask for your forgiveness. Forgive us, oh God. Cleanse us, sanctify us. And Lord, anoint us with your Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father God, to clear everything that it's not for you. Clear our worried, clear our fear, clear our anything that it's, it's, it's not good in our heart and in our mind, Father God. Lord, take it away, all the bad behavior, all the things that it's not for you. So that way we can focus only to you, Father God. Lord, Father God, we invite you, oh God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, invite you right now. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you so much, oh God. And we ask you, Lord, that you will work on us. You will sing for us. You will hear from us. And Lord, we ask you, oh God, that fill this place with your Holy Spirit, Father God. Lord, Father God, whatever it is that the enemy trying to do, we rebuke it and cancel it. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, Father God, you will cover our mind and you will cover our heart, Father God. Let it be you, only you, Father God, that we can focus right now and feel, oh God, with your presence right now, oh God. Father God, we ask you, oh God, that whoever, Father God, that you will use, oh God, we will glorify your name and we will exalt your name, Father God. Lord, Father God, lead us, oh God. Let it be in your control, Father God, our mind and our heart right now, Father God, to you alone, Father God. Lord, Father God, we thank you so much, oh God, for this service. And we ask you and surrender everything to you. We'll give everything to you, Father God. Whatever it's not working, we will work it for God, for goodness, oh God, because you are our God, our Lord, our Savior, our everything, oh God. Your name is power, Father God. So, Father God, right now, oh God, Whatever it is for, that it's not pleasing you, that it's not right, Father God, take it away in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we love you so much, oh God. We thank you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. God is good all the time. And his name is greater. His name is power and his name is healing. All right. In Isaiah 49, 23, the New Living Translation said, You will know that I am the Lord, and though those who trust in me will never be put to shame. And this is the promise of God. And we believe in God, and this is all the communion is all about. We, we observe communion because the Lord Jesus told us to obey. We need to follow his commandments. Second, to remember that what Christ has done for us in his life, his death, and resurrection. We, when observing communion, we are all to examine ourselves. We need to repent. We need to ask for forgiveness. And lastly, to show participation in the body of Christ, that his life becomes our life, and we become members of each other. So, we need to declare that we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit and is giving us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And we believe that he's coming back again. We believe and we believe. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Um, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. 
Let us partake in the body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us partake. Thank you, Lord, for the your body and blood, Lord, that you gave for us, Lord, that you always give us more opportunities and that you never cut us off, Lord. So we're so thankful for your daily mercies. They're new every morning, Lord. And But we know, Lord, that we need to grow closer to you, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' beautiful day. Amen. Thank you. It's found in Matthew 6, 20. My question, do we store up treasures in heaven if you give to, to our tithes? Our answer is yes, right? Okay. We must remember that the fundamental power built is anchor on the belief that we have to participate in the sharing of the good news, thank you, Sally. Okay, may I can I say it again? So we must remember that the fundamental core of our Christian faith is anchored on the belief that we have to participate in the sharing of the good news of our salvation through Christ Jesus and knowing the word, the Bible. When we attend church service and listening to the word, remember word is God, right? When we join Bible study and learn, when we do outreach services in far places, proclaiming the word, and individually when we share his word to strangers in Walmart, or in other in mall and to our workplace and whether we do it intentionally or not then we are doing or and contributing to the mission for the advancement of God ministry on earth. The money from tithes is intended for that purpose and our divine purpose is to share the word of God. So it answered my question. When we give our tithes, then we are storing up treasures in heaven. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this wonderful day. Oh Lord God, uh, I know that uh, we did justice to the song that we just sang a while ago. <laughs> and thank you, God, for that. Uh, even though we have some problem uh, tech technologically, but uh, that's, that's what Jesus said. It's not about it's not about the technology. It's about our heart in giving our whole heart to you, O Lord God. And for that, Lord God, thank you. I bless the the, the Titan offering that we are sharing today. And I know it, it works for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Lord. That's the, yeah, that's what we wanted to hear. It won't matter whatever it takes, we can continue worshiping the Lord. No one can stop us, even the media or whatever it is that we concern about. Because today, that's what we're going to talk about, actually. We're not focusing on this word or what we see, but we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? I don't walk by sight because I don't care about what's going on in my body right now, but I'm, I'm, I, I do care most is the... It's the presence of the Holy Ghost in this very place at this very moment. And I wanted to soak in, just like as you did in worship, it's very, very powerful worship. And I agree. To Amen. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we come to you today. We worship you in spirit and in truth. 
and as we lead us and guide us in all truth as we study the word and bring us the message that you wanted to hear today, Lord. And <laughs> it's not me, Lord God, we're going to speak, but you, Lord Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, to lead us and guide us, open our heart, open our mind, remove all the things that hinder us, oh Lord, to see you, to know you, and to, and to hear your voice today. I pray, Lord, be with us, Lord. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we continue our series. And last time, uh, the series that we have is, is the first shall be last. That's what Jesus says. And who, who among you wanted to be first? If you wanted to be first, you should be last. And if you wanted to be last, then come first. <laughs> Simple as that. So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called to be few, but few are chosen. Right? In the Lord's teaching, it doesn't really matter who was first or who was behind. I believe the Lord values more of our obedience, and the key is humility. Let's not focus on what we can gain in this word, because that's what Jesus says. What is to gain the whole word if you lose your soul? Right? Our true reward is in heaven. There will be many surprises in heaven. I tell you the truth. This is what the promise of God in us, a paradise. And there's a lot of surprises. Heaven's value system is far different from earth value system. But if you keep going and keep doing what God called you to do, to tell you the truth, your labor will not be in vain. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The, you know, story not treasures in heaven. What does that all mean to you? When you heard this, what is treasures what is that treasures that Jesus is talking about that you store up in heaven? How can you store treasures in heaven? That's all the questions that I have. And another question is that, what are the treasures that you, that, what is the difference between the treasures of the word and the treasures that, going, that God is talking about, the treasures in heaven? And... What matters to God is, is the heart of a man, you know, because this is what he said. Whatever your heart is, that's your treasure. Okay, let's find out what is your heart is, right? Today, we're both, <coughs> excuse me, we're both together look on, on this scripture in Matthew 6, verse 19, 21. If you have the Bible, because I don't have the, the, the thing here. Thank you, Gabriela. Wow, that's serving right there. It's storing up treasures in heaven. Do you know that? You're storing up treasures in heaven. There you go. Matthew 6, 19, If you are in that scripture right now, I'm reading New King James Version. Okay? He said this. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart will be also. Wow, powerful word from Jesus. This is the Lord that, that is my Savior and Lord of my life. Telling me, do not store up treasures in, on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. Now, you know, treasures, what does that mean? For me, treasure means uh, encompass anything of significant value. The things that you value, that is treasure. You value your child, Felix, then that's your treasure. Do you value your parents? then that is your treasure. If there's anything that you value that is more significant to you, then that's your treasure that you wanted to keep. 
keep it uh, for yourselves, right? It is our, it, to me, it is our saving account sometime that we look at because we value money. And so if we have savings account, then that's your treasure. If you have an asset, that's your treasure in this world. Now, the word treasures in heaven is different. The word treasures in heaven, it says this. It is also your saving account in heaven. My question, are you depo if you're depositing your saving account in your bank here in this world, my question is, do you or are you depositing savings in your in your account in heaven, if you have an account in heaven. Now, this is the thing. How can we store up treasures in heaven? Many people think that the tithes and offering. Many people like, if you put money on the charity, that treasures in heaven, right? Part of it, yeah. I have no problem with that. If you give charity to people, but look at what is really treasures in heaven is. I think it's not about money. Jesus is not talking about money here. Okay? So the treasure, so first of all, uh, as we define, what is the system of, of treasures in heaven? And how can we treasures in heaven? Treasures in, tre storing up treasures in heaven Jesus linked this command to the desire of our hearts. What is your desire? Yeah, name it. It, in your, it is in your heart. I don't know what you're thinking when it comes to your desire or what you wanted in your life. It, it is in you, right? And where your treasure is, that's what Jesus says, there your heart will be also. Jesus and the Bible mention rewards that await the believers to serve the Lord faithfully in this world. So if, if you faithfully serve God, definitely there's a reward for you. You look on Matthew 1041 <laughs> and, and the rest of the book that you said there's a crown of glory. There's a crown of righteousness. All of those are reward. And above all, it's your eternal life is your reward. If you keep storing up treasures in heaven, salvation is. Now, how can we store up treasures in heaven? Begin with this. Number one, choose Jesus Christ in your life. That's the first thing that you need to do in order to trash, store up treasures in heaven. Christ is the treasures of all mankind. But believe it or not, people reject Jesus. Many people reject Jesus. Now, for us, it clearly says why Jesus Christ is the treasures of all mankind. It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at that. What is that treasure there? You have eternal life. So, can you not treasure Jesus Christ? Can you not have Jesus Christ in your life? If you don't tell you the truth, you don't deserve to have eternal life. But if you have Jesus Christ in your life, then you have that reward. The most expensive thing, or maybe I would say it's priceless. And nothing that you can buy, nothing, nothing can really... Uh, you buy, you, you can't buy that, whatever amount of money that you have, that eternal life, okay? Now, when Jesus is our treasure, we will commit our resource. What, is, what are our resource? Our money, our time, our talents. Right? This is our resource, our gifts. God gave you life and strength. That's your, where the strength coming from and where is that talent coming from? It's from Jesus. And that is your resource.
but what you uh, but what you give but what you're putting those things on is it to Jesus or to this world it is my question our motivation for what we do is important right what is important to you that's the point now this is this is to me when i the second thing that i would like to present to you how to how to store up treasures in heaven number 1 is choosing jesus and second is to serve the lord yeah serving god or doing everything for his glory jesus demonstrate this clearly to all of us in in every gospel uh, of, of new testament the matthew mark luke and john he put his himself in a place that where he had that ministry and put it all together as a great example for us to to imitate or to be be like that what he's doing in the new test in the in in serving the father in heaven so it, it definitely uh, demonstrate properly carry out righteous practices and what are these like <clears throat> like loving, loving others, giving, fasting, and prayer. He put it all that together. You know, he, he put that as an example. He gave all this, um, uh, talking about Matthew chapter five, which is the uh, uh, the the Sermon of the Mount, right? And if you look at those things, you know, and, and God and Jesus showed everything, his compassion, his love, his endurance, his perseverance right there on the cross, you will see. Right. Even right there on 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 the last breath of Jesus Christ, he showed who he is and he showed how to serve the Lord, how to serve the Lord by just simply being humble and obedient. And that is treasures, and that's how you treasures in how to, how, how to store up treasures in heaven. Number three is obedience. Even death on the cross. Right? Paul encouraged servants that God is eternal reward for those who are motivated to serve Christ. How many of you are motivated to serve the Lord? Right? Yeah, we believe in the Lord. Many Christians believe in the Lord, but they don't have the heart to serve Him. So even if you believe in the Lord, it doesn't mean that you are storing up treasures in heaven. I'm not putting you. I'm pointing. I'm not putting point. I'm not pointing fingers here, but but it somehow it 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 comes up to to the point of knowing that serving God is different from believing. Right? And, and serving God is, is the motivation that you have is, is to definitely to imitate him in everything you did. And, and the first thing that we know that what Jesus did is to glorify this father. And that's what we should think about. When we wanted to serve God, do it for the glory of God. Don't do it for your own. Just like your talents, your gifts, your money, everything that you have, that you have possessed, you're just doing it. Your motivation might be different from the motivation of God. The motivation of Jesus of obeying the Lord, obeying the Father is simple. It's by just giving glory to God. I'm here to, in standing in front of you. My motivation, there's nothing like the same as Jesus. Because that's the only motivations that I have. Why am I being a pastor of this Numa church? Because I want to glorify God. Why I'm going to three hours drive, four hours drive, or whatever, uh, you know, whatever it takes to do things to the ministry for the glory of God. Even though I have some illnesses or I've been, you know, like having this trouble in my life, Having situation in my life, I do whatever it takes for the glory of God. 
I don't have any other motivation or, 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 or saying, like, even thinking, what benefits me to go there? What benefits me to minister to people? What benefits me to pray for you every day? What benefits me to go to Bible study? I'm not thinking even that thing. I'm thinking this is, I'm doing this for the glory of God. So when you serve the Lord, think that you're doing it for the glory of God. Otherwise, you will be failure. In Colossians 3, verse 22, 25, it says this. Bond servant, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleaser, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ, but he who does, not, who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. And there's no partiality. When you serve Christ, that's what all the motivation is all about. You're doing it to please him and not to please anyone else. You're doing it not to gain something else. Right? Coming to church, coming to Bible study. What is your motivation? Coming to prayer and worship, what is your motivation? How many of you join worship intercession every Friday night? How many of you join Bible study? Have you grown since Noma Church? It's been 10 years soon. Have you grown? Have you known about who God is more and more? Have you been exposed to, to his glorious mighty deeds? How many times that you experience God in your life? That's my point. Where is your treasure? Right? Now, obedience is the last thing. That's my point. Are you obeying God? When we live sacrificially for Jesus, for Jesus, serve him by serving the body of Christ, we store up treasures in heaven. Even seemingly small acts of service, do not go unnoticed by God. You know, when, when Gabriella gave me that water, that is storing up treasures in heaven. You can't underestimate anything that you did for someone else to serve the Lord. It, it's as a reward. I believe that because that's what the Bible says. Even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose the reward. That's what Jesus said. So you're not losing that reward. He will give it to you. God will give it to you one day. Amen? Yeah. In Matthew 19, 16, 30, it says, uh, because sometimes we have a problem of, of obedience, right? We, we tently like saying, you know, wow, that is kind of hard, what God wants me to do. I have no time to do it. I have things, you know, I just received text message today, and I'm not going to name, but someone text messaged me, I'm sorry, I won't be able to attend the, the church. Uh, because I have to work. I said this, uh, do not say sorry to me, but focus on Jesus more and pray to him. He might give you a time. Or, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I can't control people. I can't tell people what to do. And I cannot change people. Only God can change them. Now, how many people they said in the process of salvation is this? The process of knowing Jesus and the process of having eternal life. Many people they said, I just ha you have all you have to do is to choose to believe him. And that's good, right? But how many people they said, Well, I'm pushing hard and I'm I'm really uh 
take time to practice and to exercise that I'm willing and my willingness to change. How many people willing to change? Oh yeah, everyone wants to change, right? Everyone has that motivation to change. Like every new year in the Philippines, people, you hear the people, they said, well, this year, my new year's resolution is this. I'm going to change. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to swear. I'm not going to speak bad words. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And then the next week, the same. Right? It's the same thing. It, it, it just come back. So this is my point. Obey God. Because this is what God says. Choose Jesus rather than choose to change. Because the, if you choose change, it won't transform you. It might, you might change a little bit. Or somehow you kind of resisting your, or you kind of fighting over yourselves. You know, no, I'm not going to do it again. But the next week or the next day, you are end up doing it again. But when you have Jesus, choose Jesus rather than choosing, choosing to change, choose Jesus. And Jesus, when you choose Jesus, Jesus will come to you and, and, and give you that conviction through the Holy Spirit and do, and, and you will see that you will be transformed one day. Of course, it's not an instant, but he will do it gradually. From glory to glory. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so those are the process or how to treasures, how to store up treasures in heaven. Number one, first, you got to have Christ in your life. Choose him. Second is, is to serve him. And third is to obey him. Obedience, I, 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 I wanted to have emphasized that. Christ our Lord must be our treasure. If you feel him, that means you, if you want him in your life, that means surrender. One word, surrender to Jesus. Number two, serving our Lord, doing everything for his glory is humility. So when you serve, you're ready to humble because that's what Jesus did on the cross. He humbled himself, right? And obedience means submission. That the problem is that we don't submit because we have too much pride in our heart. So we can't submit when, and we can't obey unless we submit. Right? Now, let's go back to the next question of what I, I have. Now you know what is the treasures in heaven and how to store up treasures in heaven. Right? By just simply serving God, choosing Him, serving Him, and obey Him. That is treasures in heaven. That is how you store treasures up in heaven. You know what does that mean? Go to Bible study, pray along with people, and and and. Go to church and fellowship with people uh, and worship him in spirit and in truth. Simple as that, right? Now, your labor, as I said a while ago, your faithfulness means your labor, your faithfulness to God. That is what labor means. Your faithfulness to God in, um, will not be in vain. There's a reward. Now, let's look back on the second question that I have. What are the earthly treasures? Many people, the term earthly treasure is this, refers to material wealth and possession. It includes riches and assets on earth, houses like this, cars, money, and even clothes. The wealthy price item like gold, name, brand, brand name, bags, clothes, like, you know, I'm not going to mention anything, uh, brand name clothes or clothing, you know, gold, silver, raiment, etc. You know, this is the treasures, earthly treasures. And this, the people really wanted in their life instead of Jesus. 
This is what people wanted in their life instead of peace, love, joy, righteousness, wisdom. Hey, listen, can I, let's go shop. Uh, uh, hey, do you have time to shop? A first, uh, a friend of mine, I came and I asked him, hey, would you like to join us to our worship and intercession tonight? I said, no, I have no time. I have to do this. I have to do that. Yeah, and then, uh, and then I left. And then the next one came and said, hey, I found a sale in the, in, in the shopping mall today. Would you like to come? Really? What sale? A bag. It's a Louis Vuitton. It's a Dolce Gabbana Prada. Oh, really? How much? Hundred. Let's go. Let's go. When they heard things, aside from prayer and worship intercession or the Bible study, I'm okay. Uh, maybe later. But when they heard something different, not connect with the Lord or anything, activities with God, I'm past. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go this. We have so many excuses when we have weird these things. It's kind of weird, huh? Even Christians do this thing, by the way. They prioritize the world rather than prioritizing the eternal. Sadly, but it's true. Now, to tell you there's an issue about what Pastor Romy is saying here. Really? Yeah. So, Pastor, is it wrong to invest? Well, I'm telling you, uh, it is not wrong to save and invest. Some scripture suggests the wisdom of proper financial management and savings. It does that in the Bible. In Proverbs 11, Proverbs 3, verse 11 and 22, Genesis 41, 25, 36. Remember that? Joseph, when he dreams, the, uh, the, the Pharaoh dreams about saying that, you know, uh, I have a dream. Uh, seven years, uh, seven calves are, are fat and seven calves are um, thin, you know, skinny. So it, Joseph, the dreamer, interpreted that. So we must save for seven years because it's going to be, uh, there's a famine on, in seven years. So we must save now so that we have that. So there, there is something like that, that you have, have that wisdom on how to, and God even said that economically, he says in Genesis that you need to take care of all the things that he has given to you and be multiplied. See, there's nothing wrong about saving an investment. But my problem is this. The problem of Jesus is this. Your focus is on that rather than focus on him. Now you lose focus on what really important. What really important is eternal life. It's not this word. It's not what you gain in this word. Just like what I said a while ago. What is to gain the whole word if you lose your soul? So what you value the most, right? Now, Jesus is concerned about our priorities and warned against hoarding. Like hoarding means storing too much. Endlessly acquiring earthly possession. Sometimes I feel guilty about this thing. So last time I get rid of all the stuff that I have that I don't use and send it to the Philippines so that might be useful for them. Right? But you know, you'll never know how much you have in your house right now. How much you have in your closet that you don't even use. Right? And that is hoarding. Now, I, I, I little bit of advice. Well, you know, like me, I have savings on my bank account, at least. I'm, I'm storing savings just in case I have, you know, when, when I came to Nevis, thank God for those uh, wonderful family back in Nevis, you know, I, I love them so much and they blessed me so much. They ministered to me, they prayed for me and they have that love and support that I can feel that way. And I really feel that love from the Lord, I believe it through them, right? And someone gave me some amount of money that I could save. And I don't know, I said, I don't need it. So I, I, I kind of, 
It's okay. I don't need it. I came here to minister. I came here to, to be ministered by God. And they said, no, it's yours. Look, it's, it's in your name. So it's yours. So I, I, at the end of the day, I took it and, and I pray. And Lord, what, what should I do with this? So I, so I just simply save it. And just in case that someone in need, someone in, 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 in how, uh, uh, for some reason, we don't know what to expect, right? So because it's just an extra, so I don't need it, so I save it. Now, little things that we know, we don't know what's to happen, you know. So here we go. There's people that really in need, you know. I'm not going to mention the name, but of course, that's where I help my, the money that blessing that gave me, I gave it to that person because she is really in need. Did you hear my phone? Did you get my point? You know, and that's our one of our sister in Christ here in Numa Church. So th th this is are the things that I'm talking about, like how you, how you save and what is the purpose and motivation of saving. Now, it, I, I'm just saying too, like the same thing, you know, it's okay to save money for your children, for their future and everything, but it's not your focus. It's okay to invest, like to have an apartment, to have a building, to have a house, you know, things like that. Now, I have no problem with that, doing that. As long as you're focused in the Lord, as long as your goal is your priority. And your goal must be to go to heaven. Your goal is to have eternal life. How much you push hard to do your goal. Many people hoard, hoard wealth out of fear of losing it for sure social status or to gain approval. That's most of the people that motivate them. Why do you want it to have money? Why do you want it to have all this material thing? Why? Why is it for? Right? I'm not pointing fingers, so I'm not putting, making you feel bad or feel guilty about these things, but this is me too. What is my motivation of, of, of putting all this money together and saving? What is my motivation having, uh, uh, you know, having properties? What is my motivation having all this fancy thing in, in, in my life? You know what I mean, fancy? Like, you know, expensive bag, expensive shoes, expensive clothing, jewelries. Why you wanted to have them? Is it for social status? Like everybody will notice you? Is it for gain approval? That says, oh, he's rich, so you're welcome. Oh, he's wealthy. Wow, he got all this stuff. You're welcome here. Or you have the fear of losing it. You have that fear. You have that worry. What if I don't have all of these things, right? The question is not whether we should manage our money wisely, but rather, why do we save? Why do we save? That is my question. We should also note the fleeting nature of money and possession. As the modern saying, you can't you can take it with you. You know that, right? You can't take it with you, no matter what. Yeah. Jesus contrasts earthly treasures with their heavenly counterpart, clearly stating that the latter is more important. Heavenly treasures are eternal, while earthly treasures are temporary and can be destroyed. That's what he said. Everything will come to pass, but my word will not. You still remain, right? Instead of hoarding money and endlessly acquiring earthly possession, our focus should be on what God considers most important. And what is more important is the will of God in your life. I think that is the most important. If you believe in Christ, if you believe in the Lord, the most important in your life is His will. That must be your focus, not the money. After all, our heart is where our treasures lies. That's what Jesus said. Righteousness, wisdom, justice, peace, love, and good deeds have more eternal value than appearing on the Forbes list. Amen? 
Yeah, I'm not in the Forbes list. I'm not that billionaire. I wish I would, <laughs> right? Yeah. But what is more important to me is that peace that I have, like right now. Who, who can buy, who, how much I will do to pay for my bills with my, with, with my bills in, 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 in the hospital, right? So even if I have billion dollars bills in the hospital and I can pay it, but the miracle is it, not, I cannot, I mean, I cannot gain if I don't have that focus on Jesus. You know what I mean by that, right? Miracle, you can't buy anything. You can't buy miracle. Miracle is freely given if you believe and trust the Lord. Even, no matter how billionaires you, how many millions you have in your pocket, you can't buy miracles and healing. The principles in Matthew 6, 19 can also apply to how much time and energy we allocate to spiritual matters. Making money, being a workaholic is not a Christian trait and can hinder spiritual growth. We should allocate proper time to activities such as Bible reading, prayer, fellowship of the brethren. If you don't have time with that, you're not serving God. If you don't have time with those things, you are not really obeying God. If you're not having time and proper or doing all of these things that I'm talking about, praying, uh, fellowship, and have all this time with the Lord, I don't know. I don't know about you. You're not choosing the Lord in your life. That's the way I look at it. Uh, Pastor, you're not doing anything. You're, you're not working. You don't work. That's why you don't understand. I need to work. I said, I work 24-7. <laughs> but not of this word. I work for God. You know, but the thing is, even though I have to work for God, I have my personal things that I have to do. Right? So I have to find time with the things that I do for the Lord and the things that I do for myself. What is necessary and what is important. And even at your work, think about Jesus. And what your work, you do it for the glory of God. Because where your treasure is, there, were, there will your heart be also. So when I said, when Jesus said that, it means whatever your focus dictates your action. Whatever your focus dictates your action. This word in its present for me is passing away. We will give all account for ourselves before God. Many people claim to look forward to heaven, but their hearts are really not in it. Yeah? Well, how many of you look, look forward to go to heaven? When Jesus comes, are you looking forward to go to heaven? When you are sick, like me, have terminal cancer, are you looking, for, um, are you looking forward to go to heaven? So if you are, then make your heart in God. You know? Let your heart focus on God. Because as I said, what, whatever your focus, it dictates your action. So in my conclusion, why we keep storing treasures in this world rather than treasures in heaven? Because we are worry, we are envy, you know? We are not satisfied, we're not being thankful for what we have. That's why we keep, we keep treasure we keep storing treasures in, on earth. We are greedy. We are selfish. We want it to be famous. We want it to be powerful because when I have money, I am more powerful than anyone else. If I have money, I can buy a building so that people will not look at me as poor. I am telling you I'm not poor. I'm the richest person in the world. I have Jesus. Because what have I have? Miracle, healing, 
you cannot buy. That's what I have. Salvation, I have, you cannot buy. Your money, no matter how much they are, they cannot buy that, what I have. So I'm the richest person in the world, right? We pretend, we pretend to be rich. We, 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 we cover ourselves into mass. That's not you. The real you, present yourself the real you. You are a godly person, you are the child of God, and you don't put, and then, and then, and then do not, and do not be shamed. Do not be shamed of, of Jesus. Keep, keep focusing on the Lord. You know that? And, and God will reward you. Yeah. So our mind is corrupted by this world. How many of you are saying, maybe I am? When you into a trendy thing, like TikTok, Facebook, reels when you are into those things that is trendy and we are corrupted by that and we went we tend to be i i wanted to do that i i wanted to be that way i i don't i wanted to have that everything that you see that's what you wanted to be so paul encourages us to walk by faith and not by sight no do not Walk on what you see. I'm just going to give you an example. You know, I'm. I don't want to. I'm not looking on my situation, but rather looking on my in the Lord. So whatever the 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 things that they showed me on on the cities on the pet test scan that I have last Wednesday, they told me, look, you have a li you have a cancer in your liver. You have a cancer on your pelvis and your bone. And you have a cancer on your lymphoid, like all of that can affect all your system. You know, that's what I saw, but I don't look what I see. Because I, if I will look on that, my life will be terrible. <laughs> my mind will be like, I'm done. My, I, I, you won't see me standing here tonight, today. If I will look on those things, if I will see and focus on those things, but rather I will be standing here because I look upon Jesus. So whatever it happens, whatever it takes is the will of God, not my will and not what they said. Right? People just said that. People just telling me that. But I have God that who is in control of my life, who is in control of your life. Not carnality but Christ, that's what we wanted. In Colossians 3, verse one to three, it says this, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ loses our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. Walk by faith, not by sight. Set your mind, the things on above, not things on the earth. These things, the sorrow, the, 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 the wealth, the money, the fame, the power, this sickness, are things on earth. But the love, joy, peace, hope, salvation, healing, miracle, righteousness, these are the things above that you need to focus. You heard all of this, right? And we know that our God, His character and His nature, He is the God that provides and never lacks. He is the God that heals and, and provides. 
He is the God that overcomes. He's the God of victory, Jehovah Nisi. He's the God of peace. He's the God of joy. He's the God of hope. He's the God of comfort, love, merciful, faithful, and just. That is our God. That is the nature of God. This is the God of the universe who created everything. He is omnipotent, omnipresence, and omniscience. He knows everything. He has the most, he is the powerful being. You heard all of this, but the question, do you trust him? Do you believe on his character and his nature? Do you embrace them? Do you hold on to them? That's what Jesus did, says this in John chapter 1, verse 50. He says, this is the God, this is, you probably did see little things that God has done. But don't be satisfied. Keep believing and trusting our Lord Jesus because he said this. He says, you will, great, you will see greater things than this. What you've been experiencing right now is great. You have no problem, it's great. You have job, it's great. You have money on your bank account, it's great. You have car, it's great. You have a house, it's great. But do not stop believing. Do not stop seeking God and praying to God because there's greater things than this. You will experience miracles like me? Then don't stop. Just seeking Him, just believing in Him. Trusting in him because greater things than this we will see. I tell you, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Yeah, so don't be satisfied on Jesus. Be satisfied on this word of what you have. But be, don't be satisfied on the Lord. There's got to be more that is wanted to show you. Do you believe that it's your father that he will take care of you until the end? I believe that because he made that promise. Can you stand and receive this promise that he said? Isaiah 49 verse 23. This is what God says to you. Kings and queens will bow down and even lick the dust of your feet. That's what the Isaiah 49 23 says. King and queens will bow down to you and lick even the dust of your feet so that they will know that I am God. And those who trust in me, you will not be disappointed. Joshua, do you trust God? God will not disappoint you. He will not, be, he will not put you into shame. He will brace you up. He will, you will grow up with wisdom. You will grow up with power. You will grow up with success in life. Because he will not disappoint you. as what you said. You trust him because that is his promise. And today, that's what we all need to receive. As the child says, so we must be like child. His faith is the same as we have. That we should trust him above all, that we should not lean, on, lean not on our own understanding, but acknowledge him in all his ways. Because God's ways, as Psalm 77 says, God's way is holy and righteous. So we must take and hold on to that promise that we have in God. Because all we got to do is to believe and trust. Because he will not put us into shame. He will not disappoint us. Amen. Lord, this is what we are today. We come here, Lord, to serve you, to obey you, and to know that you are our Lord and Lord of our life and our Savior, Lord Jesus. And you're the only one that we can rely on and trust on. In every circumstances that we have, situation that we have, Anything that we're going through right now in our lives, God, you'll be the one who will take care of it. You will not put your children into shame. You will not put your children in, 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 in a disappointment, but rather you will raise them up. You will bring them into place where they can say, despite of troubles, I have peace. <laughs> 
That's who you are, Lord. You have, might have trouble. You might have to have troubles in life. But when we have you, you will not disappoint us. You will not put us into shame. You will raise up. Amen. You will raise us up, oh Lord. You will give us that encouragement and comfort that we need. Every day of our lives. And let it be to my brothers and sisters that are here, Lord. Whatever you struggle, whether it's in your mind, whatever that Satan put in your mind for you to struggle and to worry about and to fear about, I cast that out in the name of Jesus. Remove that in your mind. Do not think all of the things that does not belong to the Lord. Do not uh, do, take all these things out and out of your mind and out of your heart, out of your soul. All the things that Satan's trying to put in you, remove them in your mind. But rather to stand up to the promise of God and bring Satan's down underneath your feet. And you know how to do that? By just simply being obedient, yes. being humble and serve God and just and just being righteous and holy as he is as by saying, Lord, I believe in you and trust you alone. Let it be to all of us today, Lord, to experience you more and more, to bring that to bring that power empowerment and, and encouragement to your people, Lord. We are here humbling ourselves and recognizing you alone. You alone are God. You alone are God that can heal me. You alone are God that can comfort me. You alone are God that can bring me peace, can give me joy, can give me that hope, the hope of glory. You alone are my desire, Lord God, in my life. I believe in you and trust you, Lord. Let it be, Lord, to your people today. Let your glory fall. And people will see in us that glory. That glory will shine on us and through us. Let it be, Lord. Thank you, God. I speak healing. I speak miracles. I speak power. I speak glory to all of you. I speak grace and mercy of God. And walk with that power of glory. Walk in spirit. Walk in faith. And not by sight. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You alone are my heart's desire and my own to worship you. I want you more than gold. Or silver only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. Panted for the water, so my soul longer up the You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. D.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.